Today we're going to check out a super interesting keyboard that's just come around and could be a potential alternative to the ever popular Magic 468. I recently reviewed the Dremo Gram R84 and this is just the other mechanical keyboard in their line and is the Drevo Calibre 71. The box is super thin and long and is probably the most oddly shaped keyboard box I've come across. Anyways, it's pretty much the same as the other Drevo board with an old black box and some branding and info. It does show what version it is and what switches it has. And this review was made possible by Extreme Micro, which is a store on eBay that has provided many different and unique models of mechanical keyboards over time, in which have featured on this channel. So a massive thanks to them. So in the box we have the keyboard itself, and next to it is the micro USB cable and a plastic ring keycap puller. Underneath the board we have a small guide, and also again these two weird stickers that came with the other Drevo board. The board is wrapped in plastic and there's no foam. As this comes from China, whether or not it comes to you nicely is up to the seller and how they package it. So mine did have a little bit of damage on the corners, but that's just fine. And here it is. This one caught my eye because of this interesting layout. It's a very long and thin looking keyboard, as all they've done is cut off the whole top row. So basically the function row and the dedicated print screen and stuff is gone. So as this has 71 keys, it puts it into the 65% keyboard category, just like the popular Magic 468. So perhaps this has the potential to be a good alternative to that in the budget market. Another way that you can look at it is that it's like a 60% board, but with the dedicated arrow keys and the nav cluster above it included. It's also an interesting alternative to the 75% keyboards, as it's shorter in height, but it's still longer. However, we can say that it's not as efficient as something like a 75% or other 65% boards, as it has a lot of wasted space above the arrow keys. Most compact keyboards tend to pack the keyboard completely in order to get the most functionality in the smallest space possible. One of the main advantages in compact keyboards is the savings in lateral space, meaning that it's not as long across your desk. Even though it does save a little bit of space by not having any horizontal gaps, it's still essentially a 10 keyless keyboard laterally. And covering up that space may have been a good thing since unfortunately the aluminium, which is a great material, seems to be sandblasted and the finish ended up looking too shiny and kind of cheap looking. Even though it is metal, it kind of looks like a fake metal look. I feel that a more standard matte anodized or sandblasted finish would have been better. The black version, however, from what I've seen in photos, does look better. But other than that, the case looks amazing. I'm loving the very squarish design and defined lines and angles, as it's somewhat of an opposite look to the Magic 468, which is more curvy. The sides are a clean, smooth, satin finish, and we can see how low profile and thin the keyboard case is. It's also kept thinner since it's a floating key design, so there's no top shell that goes over it. These leave the switches more exposed, so it's easier for cleaning, and it also allows the lights to radiate more, which we'll see later. And on the back, there's the port, and this is a micro USB port. So unfortunately, it's not their standard mini USB port, but at least you'll have a ton of spare cables. The keycaps unfortunately have the prominent gamery edgy typeface on them. Every time this gets me, just the simple font would be immensely better. Although fortunately the characters are a bit more thinner than usual, like they're using a light version of the font. So it looks much more tolerable, especially for the letters that don't have any cuts in them. And I think they look absolutely fine and pretty normal to me. Another good thing is the directional arrow keys. Usually they're a bit more out there in design, but these are pretty nice and simple as well. Fortunately though, since it's essentially a 10 keyless keyboard with a top cutoff, these are using completely standard sized keycaps, so you'll have absolutely no problem replacing these. Turning the board over, we have a nice textured plastic bottom. It actually feels pretty cool and gives off that soft touch feel, even though it's really not. Although it does catch a little bit of dirt, especially since it's white. We also have six flat rubber feet, two of which are for when the keyboard is elevated, which is a pretty good inclusion. There's also two flip up feet that are also rubber tipped. 
and then we have this switch and this is probably the biggest thing about this keyboard because when you switch it on it turns on and is wireless and is also RGB. Being wireless it uses Bluetooth for connectivity so if you're going to use it with a laptop or tablet then there's no problems since it will more than likely have Bluetooth built into it but if you're on a desktop then you may not have that compatibility. I don't have my own laptop at the moment but I was able to test it on two MacBooks and my Android phone. So when pairing it up, it's pretty simple just like other Bluetooth devices. It can store up to three devices and is shown on the Q, W and E keys with the Bluetooth symbols. Just hold down the function key and the letter you want to store the device on and hold that for three seconds and it will start blinking and then just pair it up on the device's side. The interesting thing though is that when you look for the keyboard name, it shows up as the KeyCool 71 key RGB keyboard. So just like the last Drevo board I reviewed, which was the Grandmire 75% board, it looks to be like a rebranded KeyCool keyboard, and when I looked it up, it pretty much looks exactly the same, so yeah. The listed wireless range is at 1.5 meters. however with a direct line of sight, I was able to type from about 10 meters away, Different devices may vary, but you probably won't have any range issues anyway. Drevo also lists a battery life of 20 hours, with a charge time of less than 2 hours. The lighting turns off after 30 seconds when the keyboard is inactive, so that helps conserve a bit of battery. So the keyboard actually goes into a standby mode, and runs at a current of 3 milliamps, in which they state will actually last for 14 hours in that mode, but I obviously didn't have enough time to test that. They use a 1200 milliamp 3.7 volt lithium battery, which I'll show later. I was only able to deplete the battery once since I primarily use my desktop to do work and don't have a Bluetooth adapter for it, and I found that it was approximately correct for the first time round, but that may change in the future. And now to the lights. As I said, this is an RGB keyboard, which is actually quite a big feature as well. Everything mainly is controlled via the function key, the nav cluster, and the directional arrow keys. There's seven lighting modes plus the full backlight mode. For the seven modes, you just hit function and the insert key to go through them. To use the full backlighting mode, which I know most will want, you just hit function and delete. However, it will still do the effects and stuff when you press the button, so you have to hit function and backspace to turn the lighting modes off, and then it will just be the normal plain backlighting. You can also set two custom lighting profiles to record, so basically you'll be able to just color each individual key, and these are denoted by G1 and G2 on the page up and page down keys. A big downside in wireless mode though is that for some reason the Bluetooth key is still illuminated white. And that's a really annoying thing when you just want one colour, but is a bit less noticeable when there's more going on with the lighting. Even when you do a custom lighting profile, it still ends up white, so it's either go all white or go with all the effects. The lighting modes aren't as customizable as other RGB keyboards, but keep in mind that it's just using onboard memory for this, although the Ajaz AK33 RGB did have some pretty impressive onboard lighting customization options. The lighting modes are cool and just slightly tedious to work with, but just like many, I prefer it just to be one plain color. 
Unfortunately, one of my LEDs was a bit off color and flickers a bit, so that doesn't look very encouraging. There was also another LED that was similar, but it seems to be fine for the time being. The keyboard only comes in out to move key switches. It does mention the four colors on the box, but essentially they're Chinese clones of the famous German made Cherry MX key switches, and their colors mimic them as well. So the blue ones will be clicky, the brown tactile, the reds and blacks linear. But today we have the out to move blue switches, so it's a loud and clicky switch. So for the typing, I found this quite difficult to type on. While typing this review, I especially found myself constantly making typos, so I had to go on my other Drevo board with Altima switches as well, and it was absolutely fine. But the keyboard was wired, and this one is wireless, so when I wired up this keyboard, it just performed perfectly normally. So I looked it up and saw others complaining about this as well, and it was put down to the very low polling rate of the wireless connection. If you are slow at typing or don't require much speed, then it may be okay, but even when I'm typing at just maybe 70 words per minute, it didn't perform well and it kept skipping letters and stuff. So that's actually really unfortunate since the wireless feature is probably the keyboard's biggest selling point in my opinion, so really the switches are fine but the wireless connection is not. Some people have been absolutely fine with their wireless experience, so perhaps there are some sort of variances or something, but I honestly don't have enough knowledge to offer a solution. So if anyone figures it out, then make sure to comment below. And now to take it apart, all the Phillips head screws are at the top of the case so there's none at the bottom, which is quite typical for floating key designs. I always try to remove the least amount of keycaps needed to access these, but I always find myself not finding hidden screws, and there was one hidden behind the cover of, for the spacebar. These long keys too, by the way, are really hard to get off, so the stabilizers are super tight so take care of those. And in the end, we end up with the plastic bottom shell, and the rest of it being the switches mounted onto the aluminium backplate and connected to the PCB. The bottom shell looks pretty standard. There's ribbing along the bottom for reinforcement, which is about 1mm thick. The screw bosses are reinforced, and the rim is approximately 2.5mm thick, which is also decent, and it uses a lip and groove design to house the aluminium plate. We also have the micro USB port in blue and the lithium battery below it. This seems to be using some adhesive to stick it to the plastic shell. And yeah, I personally don't know too much on batteries so if anyone can comment on how good or bad this looks then please do. The aluminum plate is approximately 1.5mm thick and here's the cool purple PCB. There's actually quite a lot of stuff going on back here which is to be expected. The soldering job looks pretty normal, some points are a bit dirty but nothing much of note. Next to each switch is a diode, so yes it does feature N key rollover. On top of each switch we actually have 4 solder points instead of the usual 2 for 2 LED pins, so these LEDs actually have 4 pins. So overall it's a decked out keyboard with all these features with things like customizable RGB and wireless Bluetooth capabilities. All in a really interesting compact layout which is quite impressive for a budget keyboard. I love the case design and I think the square lines and thin profile look great. I like the finish of the plastic but I'm not a really big fan of the aluminium finish on the top. I think it's a little bit too shiny for my liking. Although the black version does look a bit nicer in the photos that I've seen. The typeface on the keycaps aren't great as well, but they're not the worst I've seen since they're a bit tamed by making them a bit thinner. I feel like it's a really cool layout, but it could have been more efficient with space like the other 65% keyboards out there. So essentially it will give you the space saving benefits like on a 10 keyless keyboard. 
Is it a solid contender against the Magic Force 68? I think it can be if you're dealing with the cheaper Altamu or Kale versions of the Magic Force. It has the big features of RGB lights and wireless functionality, but in my experience, it didn't excel in any of those features, but it certainly does give you more flexibility and more options if you do want to use those, but you don't need to. Thanks again to Extreme Micro for providing me with this keyboard. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check that out.